everybody, Chris here from It's Mead Made, and today I want to talk about something a lot of people get wrong when it comes to 3D printing. Most folks think that as long as you're 3D printing with PLA, you are totally safe. No harsh smells, no ABS fumes, so you're good to go, right? Well, not exactly. Because just because it smells better doesn't mean it's completely safe to breathe in. And that is what we're diving into today. So let's not waste any more time and get into it. So as most of you know, I've got a lot of 3D printers in my workshop, and I use PLA all the time. Matte, glossy PLA, silk PLA, you name it. And I was really curious about what's actually going into the air when I'm running these machines. Now, full disclosure, the company Air Gradient sent me two of these air quality monitors to test out. One of their DIYs, which is great for those of you that like to tinker, and the other one is just a ready-to-go, out-of-the-box version. Now, both of these come with a very useful dashboard that lets me track the air quality data in real time. I was especially interested because it's not uncommon for me to have, let's say, four printers running at the same time. So I've always kind of wondered what kind of fumes or particles might be building up in my workshop. So I'd like to send a big thank you to Air Gradient for sending these monitors to me so I can run these experiments. So I set up these monitors in my workshop and I just ran a bunch of prints under normal conditions. I just had a bunch of stuff to get done and I did it while the monitors were collecting all of this data. So here's the thing, even though I was just printing PLA, the air gradient monitors were picking up elevated levels of VOCs or volatile organic compounds and tiny airborne particles. Now these are the things that you don't always see or smell, but they're there. And the room was sealed, which means they were just starting to build up fast. So even though PLA is one of the safer materials to print with, it's still melting plastic. It's still releasing stuff into the air. It might not stink like ABS, but guess what? It's still not magic. And that's the thing. Next, I wanted to see if I could clean up the air without relying on my usual filters. So a little fun fact about me, I've got allergies and kind of bad ones, like the ones that are all year round. So I always take air quality seriously. Down in my workshop, where I do my laser cutting, I already have two air purifiers. They've done the job, but they've also failed. Constantly, I'm needing to do some type of maintenance on them. So for this test, I wanted to try something different. And that's when I found this Corsi Rosenthal box, which is honestly kind of fun to say. <laughs> but it's a DIY air filter that's actually been tested by places like Harvard and Brown. It holds up against some of the best commercial air purifiers. They're big, they're kind of ugly, but they work. So of course, I built one. I wrapped it in some beautiful Mead Made green duct tape to give it just a little bit of personality. So this thing cost me about $120, mainly because I use the top grade HEPA filters. But it's totally worth it because this box can do a four to six air changes per hour in a standard room, which is pretty impressive for a standard DIY build. So I went ahead and fired up all of my printers again and started the tests with this fan right beside it. And the air quality stayed a solid green the entire time. I was honestly impressed. I was so impressed, I went out and got supplies for a second one and built another one upstairs for my living room. Because why not? I could circulate the air four to six times in the room in an hour. Yeah, with allergies, that's amazing. So if you're interested in building one yourself, I'll put a link to all of the supplies below for you and a step-by-step -step guide of how to build it. It's honestly pretty easy as you've seen. But it is an amazing thing to be able to put in your space to circulate and filter the air in your room. So after this huge success, I decided, you know what, let's try this again just to make sure. So what I did was I shut the thing off. All of the ventilation was turned off, then shut the doors and turned on all the printers and just let it go. 
And sure enough, I saw the numbers starting to climb. And which means it was not a fluke. The air was getting worse the longer the print was going in that closed space without any clean air being circulated. Okay, so I'm in the middle of editing this video and I realized that a lot of people are probably gonna be wondering what this big orange spike is. And I just wanted to remind you all that this is in my workshop. It's an active workshop. I'm making things all the time, not just 3D printing, because I also have my lasers in there. And I do laser engraving and laser cutting. And those do a lot of fumes, and I have a lot of ventilation and different things for this room specifically. And... I was cutting acrylic at the time of this right here, which creates a lot of fumes. And I realized, let's turn on the Corsi Rosenthal to see what happens. And right here is at the peak, and this is when it started working. So this filter even worked with my laser cutting and brought those fumes down. They still were in the yellow when I was doing it, but it wasn't as bad as it was right here. So this is just a testament of how good this filter actually works. And every single one of these humps, you can see that I'm doing something in my workshop. And these right here are laser cutting. But then this little hump right here and this one right here was 3D printing. Because this test right here, I think I should mention, nothing was running in my workshop at all except those 3D printers and the fans right here. So this dashboard for the air gradient is really cool to be able to see all of this and you can see it live. So also if you're interested in an air gradient, I will have links to all of their stuff down below for you. All right, that's it. So let's get back to the video. So about a month ago, I was at Micro Center and I was knee deep in the middle of this testing when I overheard a dad ask some, some random guy saying, hey, is it okay for this to be in my daughter's bedroom because she wants this 3D printer? And this random guy is just like, oh, yeah, yeah, it, it, it's, it's really good. Just as long as you're using PLA because that's super safe. And I'm sure his intentions were good, but that guy walked away and I just couldn't let that go. So after that guy just walked away, I kind of went over and introduced myself. And I told that the dad that I've been 3D printing for years now and... I just overheard your conversation and what that guy said isn't entirely accurate. PLA is definitely one of the safer filaments, but it still produces fumes. Not in the way of ABS, these other filaments over here, but it's still not completely harmless either. I explained it's totally fine to have a 3D printer in your home, you just don't want it like in your bedroom. You want it in a well-ventilated area. I usually recommend in garages, basements, or in any big spaces that have a lot of airflow. But luckily I didn't convince him not to get a 3D printer. He still did get one, but he was genuinely thankful for the information I gave him. And that conversation really, it, it really just stuck with me. And when I got home, I started doing an even deeper dive into my research. I went down a rabbit hole. And I mean, I was reading studies. I was digging into all of these like science-like articles, comparing the different health organizations and what they were even saying. I even ended up writing a full guide on this and I broke it down. The real risks of PLA fumes, a bunch of common myths that I included in there and practical tips on how to make a safe setup for you. Now, I probably shouldn't have spent so much time on this document, but I, I wanted to make something that was actually good and genuinely helpful for you. And the good thing is, is I'm going to give it to you guys for free. And you can find that in my resource vault. And that is inside my free community. And if you're not a member yet, you can join today. There's no cost, no catch. All you got to do is sign up and join and you can get access to this guide and all the other freebies that I have given away. So the link is below. You can head over there, join for free and grab the guide. This guide is really just there to help you print smarter, safer, and with confidence because this isn't anything to really mess around with. So 
That being said, some of the big takeaways here is just because you're using PLA does not mean you're in the clear. You're still heating up plastic. You're still releasing fumes and particles into the air. You might not be doing it a dangerous amount of it, but over time in a small unventilated space, like a bedroom, it adds up. And think about this, you wouldn't run a gas stove for hours without a hood, or burn a candle non-stop in a sealed room. This is no different. You don't need to tear apart your setup and panic. Here's just what I recommend. Print in a well-ventilated space. Open a window, run a fan, anything to keep air moving. That's honestly the biggest key here and use an air filter, a store-bought or DIY. The Corsi Rosenthal box, which is still fun to say, is what I used, and it works great. The other thing I recommend, do not print next to where you sleep. Give your printer a dedicated space, or a space that, like I said, has ventilation. All right, listen, now this is the big one. Listen to your body. If you start getting a headache, or if your throat starts feeling scratchy, that's a cue. It's time to improve your air quality around you. Now, I'm sorry, but I don't want this video to seem like I'm trying to scare you of like, it's toxic. No, 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 I want you to be smarter about this. I want to educate you and make you just be aware that PLA is still a plastic. You are still melting it and it does produce fumes. It is worth taking some extra steps to protect your space and your lungs. Now, if you got any questions, feel free to drop them down below. Or if you have questions about my Corsi Rosenthal, you should say it for yourself. It's a fun thing to say. But my Corsi Rosenthal, if you have any questions about that, feel free to drop them below as well. Or feel free to join the free community and I can answer your questions there as well. And that's pretty much it. I wish you a great day as always, and I'll go ahead and see you in this next video right here.